How much has Tesla's EV manufacturing improved from 2017 until now? Stick around as I discuss the hard lessons that Tesla learned with a Model 3 production ramp and also now how Tesla is revolutionizing vehicle production with their two new factories. Tesla Model 3 was officially unveiled in March of 2016, and the actual production of the Tesla Model 3 happened roughly a year and a half later in Q4 of 2017. While 2017 was a very exciting year for Tesla in many ways, it was also the beginning of a very difficult Model 3 production ramp that nearly drove the company to bankruptcy. According to Business Insider, during Tesla's Q3 2016 investors conference call, Elon Musk said the following about the Model 3 production lines that they were building, quote, Our internal code name for the factory, the machine that builds the machine, is the alien dreadnought, Musk said on the call. When our factory looks like an alien dreadnought, then we'll know it's probably right. Then, in early January 2017, Tesla officially completed their acquisition of Grauman Engineering, which according to an SEC filing, is, quote, a company that specializes in the design, development, and sell of automated manufacturing systems. With this robotics company acquisition, Tesla then proceeded to build the highly automated alien dreadnought factory that Elon had envisioned. However, over automation actually caused a lot of problems and slowed down the Model 3 ramp quite a bit. In April of 2018, the co-host of CBS This Morning, Gail King, took a tour with Elon Musk of the Fremont factory and Elon said the following about the Model 3 assembly line. The Model 3 assembly line is widely regarded as one of the most robotics driven on the planet which is part of the problem. Gell then responded, in some cases, the robots actually slowed the production, right? Elon said, yes, they did. We had this crazy complex network of conveyor belts and it was not working. So we got rid of the whole thing. As a follow-up to that interview, Elon Musk reiterated on Twitter that over automation was a mistake. In this April of 2018 tweet, Elon Musk said, yes, excessive automation at Tesla was a mistake. To be precise, my mistake. Humans are underrated. When Elon Musk tweeted this out in April of 2018, Tesla was still in the thick of the Model 3 production ramp. However, as we dive into the production ramp numbers, as you can see on this chart, in April or Q2 of 2018, production was actually starting to pick up quite a bit, as you can see. Another good way to look at this is how many units were produced per day in each one of these quarters. As you can see in Q1 of 2018, Tesla produced roughly 109 Model 3s per day. However, by the end of 2018, in the full Q4 2018, Tesla was able to ramp that up to 667 Model 3s being produced per day in that quarter. In Tesla's Q4 2018 investors letter, Tesla had the following to say about the Model 3 production ramp. Last year was the most pivotal year in Tesla's history. During our Model 3 production ramp, we went through significant challenges with the battery module line at Gigafactory 1 in Nevada and later with our general assembly line in Fremont. Thanks to the hard work and ingenuity of our manufacturing teams, by mid-2018, we successfully overcame these challenges and stabilized Model 3 production at high volumes. Model 3 then went on to become the best-selling passenger car in the U.S in terms of revenue in both Q3 and Q4. With nearly 140,000 units sold, Model 3 was also the best-selling premium vehicle, including SUVs, in the US for 2018. The first time in decades an American car maker has been able to secure the top spot. If you fast forward to today here in 2022, while Tesla may not produce as many vehicles right now, total vehicles as VW and Toyota, between Gigafactory Shanghai and their Fremont factory, Tesla was able to manufacture and deliver over 930,000 electric vehicles in their full year of 2021. This is quite impressive for a company that just a few years ago, for instance, for the full year 2016, only delivered roughly a bit over 76,000 electric vehicles. 
Now, beyond just production numbers, I'd like to now move over to some direct comparisons between what Tesla manufacturing looked like in 2017 and what it looks like today in 2022. First of all, when it comes to factory locations, in 2017, Tesla only had a single vehicle factory and it was in Fremont, California. Then in late 2019, Tesla officially opened Gigafactory Shanghai in China. Now here we are in 2022, and not only does Tesla have their Fremont, California factory, their Gigafactory in Shanghai, China, but they're also about to open up their factory near Berlin, Germany, and also the Gigafactory in Austin, Texas. When it comes to the installed production capacity of these factories, as of Tesla's Q3 2021 investors letter, Tesla had an installed capacity of over 1 million units between Gigafactory Shanghai and Fremont. However, with Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Texas coming online, hopefully in the very near future, that installed capacity could soon double to 2 million units, at least a run rate of 2 million units by the end of 2022, once these factories are fully ramped up. So when you look at Tesla's full year of 2017, they delivered a little bit over 103,000 vehicles in the full year of 2017. And while I don't know the future, it does appear like it's very possible that Tesla could in 2022 deliver well over 1.5 million units because they'll have these two extra factories producing vehicles as well. If Tesla is indeed able to deliver somewhere around 1.5 million units in 2022, this would represent over a 14 times improvement over the full year of 2017. Now, beyond just the numbers that we've talked about, in order for these numbers to increase as they have, as we've shown, Tesla had to make a lot of changes and improvements to their factory. So now let's dive into some factory improvements that Tesla has made over the years. Unlike their Fremont factory, which was an existing factory that Tesla purchased and then had to retrofit to meet their needs, Starting with Gigafactory Shanghai, Tesla was able to build a custom factory to meet their exact needs, and this allowed them to greatly increase the efficiency of the factory. This topic was discussed in Tesla's 2020 impact report, where they said the following. Our Fremont factory, where we started operation in 2010, was built over 60 years ago by established automotive original equipment manufacturers. While substantial improvements have been implemented since, it was not possible to fundamentally change the layout of this facility. In contrast, Tesla's newer factories are built by us from the ground up and are designed to be sustainable and efficient. In Tesla's 2020 impact report, they also shared this photo showing how with Tesla's factory in Fremont, California, how there are a number of different buildings where different processes are done to build the vehicle. As you can see here at Fremont, the stamping is done in one building and then those parts are transferred over to the body in white building where they're assembled into the basic frame. Then that's sent over to the general assembly line and then that's sent over to the paint shop. In contrast, at Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai, you can see that all these processes are done in one single building as the vehicle moves through the production line and this greatly improves the process and efficiency. I have no doubt that Tesla's new Gigafactory in Texas and their Gigafactory near Berlin, Germany will be even a further improvement upon the processes that Tesla learned at Giga Shanghai and I expect that Tesla's factories, every time they build a new factory, it will get more efficient and better every time. Now, obviously you can't talk about the production of an electric vehicle without talking about the batteries themselves. I won't spend a lot of time on this topic because we've already talked about it a lot in past videos, but we do have to at least mention the 4680 batteries, the structural battery pack, and how much of an improvement that is over the previous design when it comes to manufacturing. With these new larger 4680 cells, there are less battery cells needed per pack, which as I've mentioned in the past, makes manufacturing a lot more streamlined and simplistic. And their new processes will give them a much higher production capacity for these batteries. As Tesla mentioned that when their processes are fully ramped, they should be able to produce around one terawatt hour of batteries in a smaller footprint than the space that would be needed to produce around 150 gigawatt hours of 2170 cells with their old processes. When it comes to the structural battery pack, as Elon Musk has said in the past, instead of an EV carrying around a battery pack like a sack of potatoes, like with previous designs, the new structural battery pack now forms part of the underbody structure of the vehicle, 
thus eliminating extra weight, which can increase the vehicle's efficiency and range. Beyond just the structural battery pack, which connects to the front and rear underbodies of the vehicle, Tesla has moved from a complex stamped middle welded together rear underbody and front underbody to a complete cast piece for the front and rear of the vehicle. These front and rear castings greatly simplify manufacturing. For example, in Tesla's Q1 2021 investors letter, Tesla showed the following graphic that illustrates how they moved from 70 individual pieces to form the rear underbody of the Model 3 to the Model Y's single piece rear casting. The Model Y's currently being produced right now at Fremont do contain the single rear casting. However, in addition, the Model Y's produced at Gigafactory Berlin and Giga Texas should also include the front casting, further simplifying the manufacturing process. There's also another stark difference between 2017 and now, and that is manufacturing profitability. In the full year of 2017, Tesla as a company posted over a $2 billion loss. However, if you fast forward to Tesla's Q3 2021 investors letter, Tesla posted $2 billion of gap operating income, a 14.6% operating margin, and their automotive gross margin, excluding regulatory credits, was 28.8%. I'm definitely looking forward to Tesla releasing their Q4 2021 financial results and also the financial results for the full year of 2021. Now I'd like to move back to a topic that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and that's the alien dreadnought factory that Elon Musk envisioned. Will this alien dreadnought factory ever become a reality? Well, at least for now, even in Tesla's new gigafactories, humans are still needed. However, Elon and the Tesla team have designed the Model Y, the new Model Y 2.0, and also I assume their future vehicles to be more suited to automation and manufacturing efficiency. For example, we talked about the single piece front and rear castings, which eliminate a lot of body shop space and also employee hours that would be needed to assemble the old pieces. And in a way that has been automated to a single machine casting that piece. Also, when you take a look at the images that Tesla has shared inside their new and existing factories, there is a ton of automation going on but of course in a much smarter way than they tried to do back in 2017. To illustrate just how efficient Tesla's new factories should be, I found a November 2021 New York Times article that mentioned according to VW CEO Herbert Deese's estimates, it will take a total of 10 hours from start to finish to build a Model Y with Tesla's new manufacturing processes as compared to around 30 hours for the VW ID4. Even with a planned production line revamp that VW hopes to make that will shave 10 hours off that production line, it should still take about half as long for Tesla to build a Model Y than it does for VW to build an ID4. In case you're curious when it comes to other vehicles on the market, not just electric vehicles, but other vehicles that are currently being built, according to this Motor Biscuits article, it takes around 20 hours to build an F-150 from start to finish. And according to a JVIS article from 2018, quote, an average car has about 30,000 parts. Once those parts are manufactured and brought to the final production line, it takes automakers about 18 to 35 hours to produce one mass market vehicle. Now I'm sure there are quite a number of other improvements that we don't know about yet that we'll find out in the coming months and the coming years that Tesla has made to their new factories. For instance, maybe Tesla will finally use some technology that they mentioned in a patent application from several years ago that aims to greatly reduce the amount of wiring needed in the wiring harness for the Model Y. Either way, when it comes to Tesla's focus on improvement, it's not only on improving the vehicles, but also on improving manufacturing itself. So in conclusion, Tesla is innovating the way that EVs are being manufactured at every level of the process, and they have become the benchmark that other companies like VW are now comparing themselves against. Do let me know what you think about Tesla's manufacturing improvements in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have not already, make sure that you go over to cleanerwatt.com and check out the 2022 Electric SUV Buyer's Guide. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.